satisfied. Tones of his goodness, find what you're looking for. For God so loved the world that he gave us, his only son, son to save us. Whoever believes in him will live forever. Bring all your failures, bring your addictions, come lay them down at the foot of the cross. Jesus is waiting. Good morning, and welcome to worship this morning. A special welcome to anyone who is visiting us this morning. The presence of visitors is always a gift here at St. John's. We're glad that you're here to join us for worship. Also, welcome to those who are worshiping with us online this morning. You know, last week, it was a bitterly cold February day, uh, and people didn't show up. Now, it's a beautiful February day, and people are not still showing up, but next week you definitely want to show up because we're going to have a great time uh, celebrating our mortgage burning. There'll be more about that in our announcements later. I invite you now to please stand as we confess our sins. Uh, We confess our sins before God and one another. We keep a moment of silence for our own confessions. Merciful God, forgive us our sins and show us how to make better choices. Be better friends, parents, kids, partners, and co-workers. Let Christ's light shine through us. For the sake of Jesus we pray. Amen. Jesus does indeed forgive. Jesus cleanses us from our sin and creates us in God's image. Receive the entire forgiveness of all your sins. Go and walk free of guilt and shame and sin. 
You are made new. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Together, let us pray. God of all who thirst, you sent your Son, Jesus, to bring the living water of eternal life to all the earth. Quench the thirst of all who long for your word, your truth, and your presence. For the sake of him who gave everything to save all, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated as we dwell in God's Word this morning. Good morning. morning. The scripture this morning is from John's, uh, the Gospel of John, the seventh chapter, verses 72, excuse me, Jesus, John, (laughs) John 7, 37 through 52. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, let anyone who is thirsty come to me. 
and let anyone who believes in me drink. As the scripture had said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now he said this about the spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as, as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. When they heard these words, some in the crowd said, this is really the prophet. Others said, this is the Messiah. But some asked, surely the Messiah does not come from Galilee, does he? Has not the scripture said that the Messiah is descended from David and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David lived? So there was a division in the crowd because of him. Some of them wanted to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him. Then the temple police went back to the chief priests and Pharisees who asked them, why did you not arrest him? The police answered, never has anyone spoken like this. Then the Pharisees replied, surely you have not been deceived too, have you? Has any one of the authorities or of the Pharisees believed in him? But this crowd, which does not know the law, they are accursed. Nicodemus, who had gone to, to Jesus before and who was one of them, asked, Our law does not judge people without first giving them a hearing to find out what they are doing, does it? They replied, Surely you see. Surely you are not from Galilee, are you? Search and you will see that no prophet is to arise from Galilee. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks. Well, I invite any uh, kids to come forward for the children's message. Actually, you can meet me back at the baptismal font back there. That's where we're going to head. Hello, children. Come on over, guys. You guys coming? Come on over. So what do you guys see in here? Just some water, right? Some water. How about, what do you see this thing doing? You see that? It's kind of moving the water around, right? Yeah. So in our scripture, we heard about living water. And Jesus tells us that he is living water and that he will pour into us. But we are, to also, we are also called to share that living water, to allow that to pour out of us. What would happen if, do you think, if this stopped working? If this stopped moving the water around? What do you think would happen? Go ahead. No more water. No more water? Yeah, it, it maybe would, it would start to evaporate. It's, it would start to dry up. Absolutely. And I can tell you that back a few months ago, we weren't running this all the time. And you know what happened? It would get dust and gross things. It would like algae on top. It was really nasty. And so we realized we got to keep this thing moving and running so it moves the water. Because if, if not, if it stays still, it's kind of like dead water. And it's the same thing with us, that, that this is kind of like the Holy Spirit. It's kind of like Jesus. It keeps us moving. It pours into us. But if we don't continue to pour out to other people, well, we're not living as God has asked us to live, pouring out what God has poured into us and sharing that with other people, like being kind to people. We want people to be kind to us, right? So we're going to be kind to other people as well. We're going to serve, we want people to serve us, so we're going to serve other people as well. And that's what Jesus tells us in living water and that we are to be living water and pour out that living water to other people, okay? So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us, for serving us. Remind us and teach us that the living water that you give us, that we pour that out to other people, that we serve others, love others, and share your grace and mercy and hope with others. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You guys can head back to your seats. Thanks for coming up.
Was I muted that entire time? No, I wasn't. I just muted it. Um, have you ever remembered a, a, can you remember a time in your life where you were just crazy thirsty? I'm talking thirsty like dry mouth, it's super hot outside, you feel like if you don't get some water in the immediate future, you're going to be in big trouble thirsty. Anybody been in that place before? Yeah, yeah. So when I was a child, I absolutely, and probably to this day, kind of, maybe not as much, hated things with carbonation in it. And so like pop, could not drink it. And this was back in the day where it felt like bottled water wasn't really normal. You couldn't really find a lot of bottled water. And so I would be, go out to a sporting event or I'd go to the, the state fair or the county fair and get in line and I was thirsty. And I'd get up there and there would be no water. And I couldn't stand pop. But I'd look and I'd see in these big coolers of pop was a bunch of ice that was slowly melting. And I wanted to walk over and just drink out of that because I couldn't find water. I remember just being like that dry throat, mouth, just needing water. I kept searching and searching. And then it feels like you, you get to a point where you maybe find a place that's water. But usually it was at that time I'd finally find a, uh, a drinking fountain. But that drinking fountain either wouldn't work or it would barely work. And you would just get a, just a taste of water. But being thirsty, needing, feeling like you can't quench that thirst is tough. It's a hard place to find yourself in. Especially when it's hard to be, have that thirst quenched when it's not necessarily something to do with liquid, right? Life. There's something that needs to be quenched we can't figure out how to quench that. So have you ever been thirsty for something other than a beverage, something else in life that you've been needing to quench that thirst? You just can't find the right thing. I mean, think about it. Thirsting for money or thirsting for knowledge or, or for a meaning in the world or, or for knowledge or thirsting for a different job or thirsting for power or fame or thirsting for those different possessions. I mean, to be, to be human is to thirst for something. Thirst for something more than we actually have. Thirsting for something different than what we currently are living. When we look, I don't know about you, but when I look at the world we live in, it seems like maybe we're, we are in this, I don't know, kind of like an epidemic of, of thirst. Uh, there's this kind of like a dryness in, the, in our land, a dryness in, in relationships around the world, a dryness in even leadership, a dryness in, at least from my perspective, people's dreams for the future. Those dreams have, for many, feels at least like they've dried up. They thirst for something. They need something different. And then we hear our, hear our gospel reading for today. And Jesus cries out, let anyone who is thirsty come to me. And when he said that, he wasn't really talking about people who had, like I said, that physical thirst when I mentioned I couldn't find water. He was talking about the human condition, almost as if the spirit is thirsting with, for something, there's this parchedness, there's, there's this dryness, lacking something fluid for life. Now, how many of you have noticed that advertisers kind of play on this idea of thirst? Uh, it's like they've learned how to almost talk like Jesus in the scripture. All of our uh, consumer-oriented society seems all to be moving in this direction. Everything is essentially based on this pitch of, of come, let anyone who is thirsty come here. For example, diets, lose the weight you want eating the food you love to eat. Cars, don't, don't let it pass you by. Anti-aging creams, correct wrinkles and fine lines before it's too late. Motorcycles, they're all built to do one thing, get you there first. Fragrances, Sizzles with surprising femininity as well as a hint of sexiness. Thirsty to be thin, young, sexy, exciting. Come to us all who thirst. As one theologian writes, 
Jesus' invitation is far more than a, a shallow bar called to a parched and thirsty generation. Jesus speaks to people who have tried what the culture has to offer and found it empty. People who are burned out on the world's hollow promises and false advertising. Jesus instead summons people who have tried the fizzy, sweet sodas of the culture and found them wanting. Jesus' words are an echo of the prophet Isaiah. Everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. But Isaiah's subsequent words feed into Jesus' invitation as well. Why do you spend your labor for that which does not satisfy? So Jesus is not saying, whatever drives your thirst, come to me, but rather, when you have discovered that none of the empty promises of a seductive culture can ease your thirst, come to me and drink of the true and living water. So what do you thirst for in your life? What do you thirst for? What, or where do you feel as though your life, you're parched in your life? Could it be in relationships with someone, in your family, in your friends? Could it be in your job? There's always somewhere, I'm guessing, you're thinking of a place. Because at some level, I think that we all want to hear Jesus say, well, here's how you get that drink. You've got to do something, though. Like, do we just come to church a little more, and then we'll, we'll find that, that thing that will, part our, that will feed our souls or that will, that will uh, quench our thirst? Do we have to increase our giving to the church? Or maybe we've got to stop smoking or drinking or even dancing or cursing, or, or do we just have to pray? But Jesus, I think, tells us the answer to that question in this scripture today. He speaks to us all when, when we find ourselves in this place of want, of need, of, of thirst. A place that we find that we're unsatisfied, that, that we're thirsty for something different. Something, something more in our lives. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me. Now, we might expect Jesus to say something like, I am the river of life, come to me and I will give you that water to drink and then end that conversation. But instead, what Jesus says is really a lot more radical. Jesus promises that, that if we come to him with our thirst, we ourselves will become rivers of life. Out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now, it's interesting that because in the region that Jesus lived and preached, there was this sea called the Dead Sea. And it was considered dead because really uh, the amount of salt that was in it, nothing could live. Nothing could survive. And nearby was the Sea of Galilee, which was kind of the, the fishery, the great fishery of the area. It was thriving, and life was all around. And the main difference between the two seas was the water that water flowed into the Sea of Galilee and then flowed freely and fed other areas while the Sea of Galilee water flowed in and then became stagnant and just stayed there. It pooled there. There was no outflow. In other words, that the sea that ceased to move waters died. So again, when we hear Jesus preach, we hear him say, let anyone who is thirsty come to me. He invited people who were thirsting, who desired more for their lives to follow him. And then he goes on to quote scripture and says, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Jesus doesn't just hand us like this spiritual beverage and say, kick back, relax, life's going to be all peachy now. He doesn't do that. Instead, he empowers us, he challenges us to then go on and share that living water with others. I like what one pastor wrote. If living water is water that moves, and if living water comes from the believer's heart, then followers of Jesus rise to the occasion when they move and they flow. To be a follower is to act. 
Brothers and sisters, Jesus was alive, active, moving, flowing, changing the world. So we are invited then to to believe, to follow, and, and flow with rivers of living water. We are invited to act and to flow and to change the world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Trampling
confident in God's abundant grace, we pray together for the church, the world, and all those in need. Bread of life, you offer sustenance that satisfies body, mind, and spirit. Help us to receive your living bread with humility and grace. Lord, in your mercy. You infuse life into all creation with bread, water, and air. Show us how to provide nourishment to your created things so that our hands mend, not destroy, all that you have made. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Adorn your leaders with mercy, truth, justice, and willingness to follow your lead so that all whom they lead may be fed and filled by their governing. Lord, in your mercy. Feed hurting and broken souls and bodies with your healing bread, especially Jenny Klein, Burnett Heidenreich, Maynard Nelson, Lloyd Johnson, Burl and Gary Geisinger, Jolene Davidson, Glenn Rosenberg, Marilyn Nelson, Russ Orson, Celeste and Chris Strand, and all who, we, all who we name silently before you. We pray for Larry and Vicki Green and family as they mourn the death of Larry's brother, Lauren. Mend all who are in need of your loving touch. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Let us never forget all who are suffering from hunger, poverty, homelessness, isolation, neglect, abuse, exile, or torment. Show us how we can bring aid to all who suffer. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. With all your saints, we gratefully receive the abundant blessings you have poured upon us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Grateful for your everlasting faithfulness, we lift our hearts and our prayers to you, merciful God, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Our service continues with our offering. The, uh, the joyful jar is also out, and uh, we invite you to share your gifts with our community. Come thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melody song and sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mountain fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Here I raise my
pray together. Receive these gifts, Holy Lord, which, which we, we offer with gratitude and generosity. And Nourish others with these gifts as we ourselves are nourished by your blessings. Amen. Lord, remember us in your love and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine, thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for just a few brief announcements. Again, uh, welcome to all those who visit us. We are so glad that you're here to join us for worship. Please come and join us again. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, next Sunday is really going to be an exciting day. We are going to be burning our mortgage. Woohoo! I wanted to come up with a song about burning, but all I could go back to were like disco songs, like Burn Baby Burn, and I didn't want to age myself, so I'm not going to sing that for you today. I just started the fire. Oh, there we go. Morgan so, burning. I didn't interrupt your sermon at all. Well, if you would have had something as good as that, you should have. This time. <laughs> So, um, so next Sunday, join us between services for worship. We're going to be making s'mores. We're going to have campfires outside. Um, we're going to have s'mores bars inside. We're going to have hot chocolate bar. And, uh, oh my gosh, we had a meeting about this. You won't believe all the different things that you can put in a hot chocolate that are going to be available. So bring your fat pants and uh, be ready to help us celebrate tomorrow, or next Sunday between services. Next Sunday is also Transfiguration Sunday, which means that uh, we will soon be entering the season of Lent. We are still in need of Lenten speakers, so if you'd like to be one of our Lenten Wednesday evening speakers, please speak with Pastor Alex or myself. Ash Wednesday is uh, the following Wednesday after uh, next Sunday, and we will also be having our soup and sandwich suppers. Next Saturday night, we invite you to join us here uh, for family game night. And uh, when we talk about family game night, it's not just for families. It is for the family of God here at St. John. So join us for that. It is going to be a great time. It starts at 5, runs to 7 o'clock. Um, on la this past confirmation, when, or past D-Way Wednesday, um, I... Uh, played a game of group, Pastor Todd says, and I hope to do that next Saturday at family game night. And so we will have uh, adults playing uh, Pastor Todd says. Um, I tried it with Alex and he failed because he doesn't listen to anything Pastor Todd says. <laughs> All I true. got was a boom. <laughs> Dan obviously doesn't agree with me either. <laughs> Truth. Didn't get another one. Um, there, are other, uh, there are other announcements in your bulletins. We encourage you to t uh, take a look at them. One other one that I find intriguing, though, is that we are going to have a uh, sacred parenting class that is beginning. Uh, we had a member of our congregation volunteer to uh, look into that for us, and uh, that is starting up soon. Take a look at that on this very beautiful and colorful uh, bulletin that we have. Those, I believe, are all the announcements, unless we have any others uh, to share. Uh, I invite you to please stand for our final blessing. Brothers and sisters, go into the world with joy. Tell the world of God's love. Go without fear. Go without shame. Go without apology. Go in the name of Jesus. Amen. We invite the kids to come forward and join us by playing some instruments. Come all you weary, come all you thirsty, come to the well that never runs dry.
child that he gave us his one and only son to save us whoever believes in him will live forever bring all your failures bring your addictions come lay them down at the foot of to all. Together, Together we, we live, live and, and share, share the love of Jesus. With the gifts of living water, go in peace, alive and flowing. We will. We will. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
Thank you. 